Hi y'all, Courtney here, and I wanna to talk to you today about getting ready for the $50 a week challenge and some thoughts and ideas I had, and I wanted to share some of my tips for getting ready. And the first one is gonna be one that I share a lot in many of my videos, and that is understanding your why. Today, I saw a video on YouTube, and it kinda got in my craw, to be honest with you. They were bashing frugality and basically saying that people in the frugality world and the debt-free community are all about um, scarcity and it just it really kind of upset me because the truth is some people have to live this way and others choose to to make sure to choose their priorities and in some way I think this guy was trying to say that you choose your priorities if you want to have lattes every day and you budget for that and you have enough money that's fine and so I'm not gonna argue with that but I do think it's important that we know our why 20 years ago, I had no choice but to be on a very strict budget. I was raising, well, 20 years ago, I have four kids, but I was raising three kids, and things were really tight, and I was in college raising kids. Life was pretty tough, and I really needed to be frugal just to make ends meet. I couldn't pay daycare and work and make enough money. Now, fast forward, kids are grown. I am able to cut back at my work and I don't have to be frugal, but this is just the way I live. And frugality has enabled me to have a very comfortable lifestyle. And I just recently in the past two weeks retired one of my businesses. I do not have to work full time anymore. I can work part time because A, my earning power has increased because of all the years I worked hard and B, because I have been frugal, I only have a mortgage, no other debt. So I think frugality is a wonderful thing and I think you ought to know your why. I'm gonna give some examples of a why before we go on. You might be living on disability or fixed income and you may not have the ability to spend more. You may be in a job where or an area where your ability to, to increase your wages is very slim. There are a lot of people working 40, 50, 60 hours a week in areas where there just aren't better jobs and it's not always easy for them to, to learn or to figure out how to make more money. That's just the reality. You may be like me and have everything you need and plenty of money, but you don't like to be wasteful and have a lot of debt and waste and I am, I would consider myself someone who cares. I feel like my choices impact other people. If I am wasteful and using up all the trees in the world and, you know, just being careless that I'm actually, that that's not what we are called to do. And it is just, it's wrong to me to do that. So you have to know your why. I do this also to keep myself in check so that I don't spend too much money and then I keep my finances. I'm so used to spending so little money that when I put my check in the bank, I only need about half my income to live on. So it's been a really freeing and it gives me freedom. And that's why I do it because it gives me freedom. So the second thing is to look at, have some good cookbooks or websites for recipes. I find cookbooks to be helpful. I use Google a lot. I just go onto Google and I'll say how to cook green beans and it'll come up something real quick, like, you know, a quick recipe. I have found this extremely helpful in cooking vegetables and easy things that I'm not comfortable cooking. There are some great cookbooks out there for eating on a budget. Two of them are called Eating More With Less or Cooking More With Less. It's a Mennonite missionary cookbook and it's a staple for people who are thrifty or frugal and for missionaries traveling. The second one is Good and Cheap and it is based on living on um, what we used to call food stamps or using an EBT card. And so that is, those are really great resources. Of course, you can always Google something and find out how to do it. But if you're like me, sometimes it's easier to just pull out the cookbook and have those easy recipes right there. The third thing is a tool that you may or may not be familiar with. And I used to teach nutrition for the um, Department of Human Services. My first degree is in early childhood education. I used to be a teacher. I minored in nutrition. I ended up getting a facility management 
um, degree as well, managing facilities, which has helped me a lot in doing this. And I had to do the shopping based on the USDA guidelines. And so I was taught this little tool. Get rid of. Okay. This is the USDA official USDA food plan cost of food at home at four levels. This was updated just last February. And so you can go here and see what you should be spending per month. It gives the age or family of two or family of four based on age, the thrifty plan, the low cost plan, the moderate plan, the liberal plan, and the weekly and monthly. And this is what one should be spending for a family. So my husband and I, for instance, he is 61 and I'm 48. So we're actually in two different categories. I'm gonna go with the higher plan. This is the thrifty plan. So it's saying that we could eat thrifty for $89.50 per week or $500 per week. Is that right? No, 387. Okay. And that liberally would be 177 a week or monthly would be 769. And I would say that we are probably moderate to liberal because we eat a lot of organic food and grass-fed meats and milk products. So that can change. But we are right now trying to be between the thrifty and low cost plan, okay? All right, so those that is a great resource if you need to know like what can, what should I actually be able to feed myself on and what um, how much do I actually need to, to have to eat, which I wanna add, this kind of upset me when I saw this. I have a son who's disabled and for a long time I did not let him get on any kind of assistance because I was very concerned that he would become dependent on it and then I had the realization that like he he may never be fully independent and if I die or something happens to me I need to have him set up to get services so that you know he's not homeless and he he's not getting services for the um, EBT right now the EBT card but when he was he only got hundred and twenty three dollars a month and if you look at this it's pretty clear that one cannot eat. He is a 20 year old, 21 year old male. And it says that the monthly amount for a 21 year old male on the thrifty plan is 186.70. So they weren't even giving him enough to buy groceries. So that really bothers me because I tell you, my husband and I, we pay a lot of taxes and I won't go into that, but if you know anything about if you have a disabled family member, if you help them too much, they take their their services away from them. And then if something happens to you and you're not able to help them, they have no services. So I won't go off on that. But people, people like my son need to learn to shop thrifty. So the next one, number four, is to buy in season and so you don't really have to know what's in season if you're not you know if you don't live where there's agriculture and you're like i don't know when apples are in season so it's usually fall um you know or i'm not sure when berries are in season they're going to be cheaper when they're in season okay the reason you have cheap watermelons in the summer is because they're in season in the summer apples are in season in the fall berries are in season right now in the spring and so all you really need to do and that goes to number five is shop the sales so if you get your sales circular or you go online and you look at what's on sale most of the time it's gonna be what's in season now I really like to eat organic I have some health problems I have um, RA rheumatoid arthritis it's not bad right now but I'm very careful with my health I also have a condition called sojourn syndrome which affects my thyroid and my heart and so I feel like I eat as healthy as possible and I spend a lot of money on my food. But if you don't have the money, you just do the best you can. So, you know, organic eggs can be five, six dollars a dozen, and but you can buy eggs for like a dollar thirty-seven a dozen as well. So you just buy the cheaper eggs. 
you buy the regular milk, you buy the regular bread, you don't buy the Dave's Killer Bread or the Ezekiel Bread. You know, you're still eating healthy. You may be eating non-organic, but you're still eating healthy. If you're buying your fruits and vegetables that are not organic, you don't have to, you can buy veggie washes, it's not necessary, but you can just simply use vinegar and water. That works really well too. So shop the cell circulars. And the next one, number six, is to use store coupons. I am not a big couponer because most coupons that you see in the newspaper or magazines, those are generally for processed foods. And we don't eat much processed food. But store coupons, if you have a loyalty card, they'll give you coupons that are for things that you actually use. So Kroger sends me coupons for like spinach and organic chicken and organic milk and berries. And when you buy $10 in produce, you'll get $2 off. And so you don't wanna just let those sit. If it's stuff you buy anyway, you wanna make sure that you make a plan to use those. So I will, um, excuse me, I have, I do have a heart condition and so sometimes it makes it hard to breathe. So I will take those coupons and make a list and go coupon shopping every now and then and just buy up all my coupon stuff and try to use that. And that's what I'll be doing later this week because I only have $48 left in my budget for our groceries through the, through the $50 week challenge because I prorated it out over 10 days because I don't shop every week. And um, I'll be just using my coupon stuff. The next thing is have a plan. You have to plan your groceries, you have to plan your meals. Um, and you know, if you know that you can make more, you wanna keep them simple. The more ingredients, the more complicated it's gonna be. Keep your meals simple. This is not a time to get fancy with your meals. Bake some chicken and, or you know, honestly, rotisserie chickens now are just as cheap to buy than it is to do your own. If you're on a, a tight budget, they're pretty much a great value because you can often have three meals up to six servings or more off of one chicken. And that is a really good value. So like we we purchased a chicken yesterday. I had a chicken spinach salad for dinner. I'm gonna have, my husband had chicken um, and vegetables for lunch. I'm gonna have a chicken spinach salad for dinner and there will still be enough chicken for another serving. And then what is left, I'm gonna make some chicken soup out of. So you have to begin to think like that. You know, buying larger quantities and breaking them up is also a good idea. I used to have like, I'd get a bag, like today I had a bag of butter beans I wanted to cook. And it was a big bag and I thought, we're not gonna eat that much, but I want some leftovers. So I took the bag and I halved it. And I've been getting really better at that, not cooking the full serving, because it's just two of us. If there's a large family, you wanna go ahead and do the, the larger serving. However, even if there's just a couple of you or one of you at home, buy the larger size and divide it up because things are cheaper in larger quantities most of the time. You look on the sticker and it's good at the bottom of the price and on the left side, it'll say per serving size. And you'll sometimes notice that things will be several cents per pound or serving cheaper. Now, a lot of times we don't think that adds up to a lot, but let me tell you, yesterday I went shopping at Walmart, um, which is the Walmart local grocery store instead of Kroger. I noticed there that every time I go, I'm shocked at how cheap my groceries are. Like $100 sometimes difference, $50 to $100 difference. They don't have the selection that I like, so I don't get there as much, and their produce is not as good. But you know, it is significantly cheaper. And I guesstimated yesterday as I kind of compared off the top of my head that a lot of the items I buy are 50 cents cheaper per unit or per thing, you know, than they are at Kroger. So kind of know your stores and their prices. I won't shop at Walmart all the time, but I'm definitely going to try to make a habit of going there more and stocking up on things there that we use a lot of. Like I drink Earl Grey tea every morning. I buy the big thing. It's six seventy eight at Walmart. Um, I don't know what remember how much it was at Kroger because I always just get whatever's on sale. So know your stores and know their prices. The next one is number eight is to pantry shop. And so 
this week I have enough meals planned out. I have them all here. I wrote down everything I can make. I will tell you what we're having. This was a combination of what we had in our pantry. I looked through the pantry and I went to Walmart and I got things that I could use. We're having broccoli cheese soup, chicken quesadillas, baked fish, turkey meatloaf with vegetables, chicken, and I did a sweet potato. I had some, a, I already had a sweet potato. I had some um, Brussels sprouts and butter beans, spinach salad, and then tuna patties with veggies. And for breakfast, I also had eggs, bacon, pancakes, juice, and smoothies and toast. I don't eat toast and we don't eat bacon very often. I got it for just for a treat. And so that's a kind of a rarity. We have that maybe once on the weekends or a couple of times a month only. So I added all that up and that gave me 24 meals divided by two people was 12 meals, not including breakfast. That was six days worth of food. So I kind of decided how many servings that would be. And that would bring me to number nine, which is know what foods are cheaper in general at the store. And I made a list of just a few things. And so obviously eating meat is kind of expensive and people may not realize that's obvious and it's not really very healthy for you to eat a lot of meat as I say that as I just told you I had bacon but you want to limit your meat as much as possible and you can make honestly healthier vegetarian meals probably cheaper rice and beans obviously your cheapest foods that you can you can make you can make beans for like 25 cents a serving and rice is really cheap there are all kinds of like cool buddha bowls that you can make that have rice beans vegetables and dressing you can get online and find a lot of things like that because i'm on low carb and my husband has a heart con he also has a heart condition we have to eat kind of a special diet but you can do the buddha bowls actually really cheap if you think about how to do them other things that are cheap are oats eggs bananas are always cheap sweet potatoes and potatoes are very cheap you can do a baked potato between two people you could take out the insides mix it up with like some broccoli and you might do some cheese or some sour cream or some nufacella cheese mix that all up put it back in put some cheese on top of it and you have a twice baked potato dinner for like nothing like literally you can have a meal for a dollar so per serving so there are all kinds of things knowing what foods are cheap apples oranges your basic fruits are going to be cheaper than your fancier fruits but again you got to look to see what's in season that i can buy right now that's going to be cheaper and so there are a lot of other foods that are cheap but sticking with the vegetable aisle, looking what's on sale, because that's gonna be in season, what's on sale in dairy, if you do dairy, and on meat, eating what's on sale is your best bet. So when I see, I do a special kind of organic ground turkey, and when it goes on sale, I stock up and put it in my freezer, because I can save a dollar per pound on that turkey when it's on sale, and that's a huge savings, and it really helps me not go to the grocery store. The less you have to go to the grocery store, the better. If you can afford to buy in bulk, don't buy the little packages of oatmeal. Buy the big container of oatmeal, and then it's so easy to make. You literally put some water in it, throw it in the microwave, or put it in a pan with some boiling water and add your stuff. Less than 25 cents a serving, y'all. It's super cheap. Um, so if you're not sure what foods are the cheapest, just a quick Google search will tell you how to eat healthy and cheap. And number 10 is rethink your meals. You know, we just, we start to meal plan and we get really fancy and I love to cook. I'm a really good cook, but sometimes I'm just tired after work and I want things to be easy. And so, and the truth is, sometimes this morning, y'all, I was so busy, I drank my tea and ate a hard-boiled egg and went to work. And then I realized when I got to work, I did not eat enough. So on the way home for lunch, I had some nuts and some water until I could get the dinner that I was making prepared. And I just ate a late lunch. So a lot of times, we don't have to eat a really fancy lunch. Breakfast may be a smoothie. It's okay. I mean, 
Breakfast may be a piece of egg and a toast. Dinner may be cereal or egg and toast or some simple beans and cornbread. You know, just try to think realistically about simplifying some of your meals. If you're gonna make some complicated meals, save those for the days when you have less to do and make enough for leftovers so that you can really enjoy it twice. But don't overcomplicate your meals. That'll make it a lot easier. Well, this video has gone really long. I hope you liked it. Please hit subscribe and thumbs up if you like this video. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.